Yo, yo, yo. Thanks for tuning in to the 18th episode of JTalks Crypto. And in this episode, I am going to be reviewing the Apollo BTC uh, by Futurebit. Uh, you can find them at futurebit.io. Uh, .io, futurebit.io. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be reviewing it, giving you guys my thoughts on it based off uh, my little uh, venture so far into SHA-256 mining. Um, <clears throat> I have compiled a couple of like glory shots uh, that I will be giving you guys. And um, this one is the full package. It does have the node. It has the um, and it has the miner on it. Uh, I've been running it on turbo because I'm a savage and I like to fucking crank this shit the fuck up because why the fuck not? If um, and I've I've been having I've been running this thing on turbo mo turbo mode pretty much uh, the whole time. Um, uh, I did have it when when I first turned it on. It I had it on eco mode because uh, when you turn it on, essentially what you're supposed to do is uh, run it on eco mode because the node is syncing and it's essentially it's going to stress out the CPU a little bit too much if you have it running on regular uh, and it might overheat. Um, I don't really have any issues with mine. Uh, sometimes what I do get is I do get a lot of hardware errors. Uh, I posted on the Bitcoin talk forums about it and I asked about it and essentially if you know anything about uh, ASICs, and I'll give you guys just a little, a little, uh, a little glimmer into the ASIC world because it's everything is kind of like really complicated. So the way that it works is that the there's like silicon inside of these chips, and it's I think it's called something like an ASIC core, and um, pretty much uh, some cores are better than others. So you can have a couple of USBs. So, so, you know, I have a couple of these uh, new pack USB miners and some sticks run better than others. Other sticks you have to run at lower frequencies. Um, and it's because every single chip is a little bit different. And um, if I recall correctly, I think these have uh, 44 chips. So I think what's happening with um, the high instance of hardware errors is that uh, one of the chips or a couple of the chips probably have bad cores. And uh, according to um, uh, John, the, the dude at Futurebit, uh, he responded to me at the um, on the on the Bitcoin talk forums. They're, they might be rolling out an update to uh, so to kind of like disengage the bad cores. Um, my overall thoughts on the unit, honestly, coming from a USB miner, this is the shit. It's fucking awesome. Uh, they kind of like say that even on turbo mode that it's loud, but it's super fucking quiet. In my opinion, you can definitely have it running in another room. Um, I guess uh, another thing that I want to say to keep in mind is that this is like the first device of its kind in a very, very long time. Um, you have not been able to mine actual Bitcoin with a Bitcoin protocol with a Bitcoin like uh, like Bitcoin core for like you could. I think pretty much if you wanted to, you could take one of these uh, the standard package and uh, just get a Raspberry Pi and uh, run your own node on it and um just mine with that, and it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's crazy because you're actually getting a decent amount of power. Uh, if you run this thing on eco mode, you can get around uh, two tera hashes, two tera hashes and change, maybe a little bit over, um, and that's two trillion guesses per second. That's freaking wild. That's freaking wild, and it, it does it super duper quietly if you have it on the on the eco mode. Um, and, you know, if you overclock it, uh, if you put it on turbo mode, you're getting three trillion guesses a second. If you have that on a lotto, like uh, you're probably not going to hit it, but it's still dope that you're getting that many guesses and running a node at the same time. The node feature has been really, really cool. I thought um, so. We just actually went through the uh, craziest um, difficulty adjustment in Bitcoin history. I believe it was like 27 or 28 percent. And uh, this little guy uh, was over here mining right along with it. And, uh, you know, before everything kind of like went down, um, before the, the, the difficulty adjustment, uh, I, I, um, I mine using PPLNS, I believe is the acronym. And um, before the difficulty adjustment, we were finding like maybe like 
you know, two blocks a day, three blocks a day, on a good day, like four, and then like, yo, on the first, the second that the, the, the difficulty adjustment hit, like the first day, six blocks, I'm like, yo, let's do it, let's go, let's go. Um, I did post a little thing where I kind of broke it down um, as to like what your payout would be. Uh, the thing is, it's really, really difficult to tell people what your payout is going to be. And the reason for that is because there are different models that you can follow. You know, there's a pay per share where it's essentially every single second that it's running, you're guaranteed to get um, get money, like uh, get Bitcoin no matter what. And um, the other model is kind of like a uh, pay per last share, which uh, that kind of like depends on luck. And that's kind of like the model that I'm following with this because essentially like you just have um you just have a little bit of a better choice uh you do it's it's like real mining because uh pay in in bitcoin you're not really guaranteed to uh make a return just by mining right and essentially what these uh paper share uh pools do is that they take on that risk so it's just like uh whatever give us your hash power and we'll buy the hash power from you and then we'll sell you the um um will give you like bitcoin in return for that and that's cool but one of the things that i do like with um the system that that like you know slush pool is using or kano pool uses is that when you do hit a block you one your reward per block is going to be higher than a, a pps i believe um and <clears throat> you're also it, it's just like you know that the that your hash power found that block you know which which block you found and i think that, that that's freaking cool it's just like hey like you know it's like so it's like uh i saw a tweet someone said uh i sent a freaking um transaction for like four cents uh, uh for, for i sent a bitcoin transaction on chain for four cents and then i got the next block and i'm like oh that's so dope you know like that's something that i wouldn't have understood if i didn't get this uh future bit so that's something to keep in mind that like you know i know the price is going up um the first couple of batches like you guys I, I don't know if you're gonna run into issues i have been seeing a couple of uh issues on, on the forums just like a couple of minor things like you know tighten the screws um i think it's important to be patient with products like this it's uh and it's important to support it and kind of like just understand like the manufacturing limitations because it's just like if we don't support it or if we just if we just shit on it um it's not gonna keep getting developed and um we have to kind of like not not just be like um like you know how do i say this we have to be realistic and like demand uh you know a solid product but we also have to uh be understanding as consumers where, where it's just like yo like literally man i think we just hit the all-time high in nodes and it's something like or like reported nodes and it's something like 12 or it's like less than thirteen thousand, like Think about that. There's less than 13,000 like full Bitcoin nodes or something like that. And um, like to me, that's crazy. That's super duper crazy. And I'm glad to, to, to um, be supporting a company that's like increasing that node count. And because um, it's important to run your own node. It's, it's important, believe it or not, uh, to, to push your own code and uh enforce the enfor enforce the rules because like no one else is gonna enforce them if we don't do it um apparently there's only 12 there's a, like like 11,599 right no <laughs> i don't i don't know the actual number um I, i'm pretty sure it was 12,000 let me fact check it fuck it we'll do it live 13,534 nodes at the time of recording, according to bitnodes.io. It's crazy. 1,838 in the United States of America. I wonder how many people we added with um, these future bit nodes. That's pretty crazy. Like, um, support this shit. Run the node. It's fucking cool. It's important. Um, I'm reviewing the product more on the, like it, as, as a miner, it's dope as hell. Don't get that twisted. Like in my opinion, like this device is, uh, in terms of Bitcoin residential miners, this is state of the art. There's nothing better than this. There's nothing more efficient power, power wise, um, that's available 
in, that you can actually have inside of your house without like waking up all your neighbors and having something that kind of like Satoshi really did kind of envision, you know, like when he made this, he had his laptop and he did know that it would and that that it would eventually it would get bigger, but I don't know if he anticipated like the large ASIC market that there is today. Um, but you might it, it might have also still been there because like there's a lot of game theoretic components to like that whole mining aspect. So it's just like it's hard to predict what he had in mind. Um, at the end of the day, it also doesn't matter. It's kind of like will we make it? And um, that's why I chose to support like um, Future Bit. Like you know, I paid paid sticker price. Uh, this is not endorsed. He didn't ask me to make this video. Uh, I just supported it because this is a voluntary open monetary network, and we could do whatever the fuck we want with it, and no one can say no. That's uh, the fucking beautiful thing about it. And um, I think everyone should support it. Everyone should mine. It's a fair distribution of the currency. Like a hash is a hash, dude. Like, that's one of the things that I learned about um, the most with this ho hobby mining. It's just like, yo, if you if you submit a hash and you guys find a block, you're getting paid. And that's it. Like, Bitcoin, the protocol doesn't care. It's not going to discriminate. And um, that's one of the, the craziest things about this whole, this whole shit that I've kind of, like, realized. All right. So you want to ask about the profitability of uh, the future bit miner. So this profitability is using a um, paper last share uh, payout, like, you know, with slush pool or cano pool, you know, some, some smaller pool shit, not a paper share model. So roughly for every block we find for every Terra hash, I'm getting 130 Satoshis. So if you're running this thing on turbo mode, that's around 400 Satoshis for each block that you guys find that we find. Um, before the crazy difficulty adjustment, when it was like at 19 trillion or whatever, whatever that 19 T, like it was, it was a big ass number. Now it's around 14. Um, when it was like around 19 and higher, we were getting like three blocks a day on average. There were some days where I got like one block and there were other days where, I, where we got like five. Um, since the difficulty adjustment, we found like, I think it was like six blocks the first day. So, um, or yeah, it's just like, it's, it's, it's definitely going up. Um, and we'll see what happens. Cause, uh, we have no idea what's going to be happening with this, um, with, with all this hash power that just left the network. Um, and that's kind of like one of the exciting things about mining too, is that you never really know how much you're going to make. Um, it's truly, truly, truly a free market. Anyway, uh, this video and this review is probably getting kind of long. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions in the comments, uh, feel free to, to ask. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know I hate asking. I am still doing this open dime giveaway. If we get to 1,000 subscribers, um, somebody's going to be winning an open dime. And uh, if we get to 100 subscribers, someone's winning a free t-shirt. I don't know who yet. I don't know how I'm getting that done, but it's going to happen. So... This is JTalks Crypto, and I'm signing off.